Okay, I have uh, 5.30. So with that, I would um, like to call to order this May 19th meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Um, Holly, would you take the roll, please? Neil Mayhood. Here. Vice President Ackerman. Here. Director Foles. Here. Director Hill. Here. Director Smalley. Here. <clears throat> okay, so first order of business tonight will be that um, I am going to turn over the presiding duties to Jamie because I'm in a rehab center. Um, my blue is my hospital gown, which I'm not going to show you, uh, and I'm recovering from hip surgery. I'm actually doing very well. I'm going to bust out of this joint on Saturday, but uh, between the chances of them bombing into my room to take my blood pressure, which they seem to do like every other hour, and my um, sort of opioid-addled brain, I thought it would be better to let uh, Jamie run both uh, the closed and the open session tonight, and so I will be... Uh, I'm participating, uh, but I will be off camera and Jamie, take it away. All right. Thanks, Gail. Um, I, we all are uh, glad to hear that you're on the mend and that you will be out of there on Saturday. So good news. Um, with that, uh, are there any additions or deletions to the closed session agenda? <coughs> Not hearing or seeing any. Um, let's see. I don't see any attendees. Um, are there any oral communications regarding any of the items in closed session? I would assume not because there's nobody here in attendance right now. So with that, um, I think we will adjourn to closed session. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, that's 6.30. Um, shall we... Uh, Convene to open session. Um, I uh, just want to make an announcement as we return to open session that um, at the beginning of the uh, meeting at 5.30 before we adjourn to closed session, uh, Chair Mayhood uh, gave the gavel to me for the meeting. She is here and voting, but uh, she has asked me to run the meeting for um, personal reasons tonight. So um, that is why I am chairing. And uh, with that, we are um, back from co uh, closed session. Um, we did take an action in the closed session uh, regarding the uh, uh, litigation with the County of Santa Cruz. Um, so we uh, voted unanimously. I'm sorry, I'm pulling up the language in front of me. <laughs> Give me a moment, I'm sorry. <clears throat> The board voted unanimously in favor of authorizing the district manager to sign on behalf of the district a proposed settlement agreement resolving the county's dispute with the water district about the Bear Creek Road collapse, which occurred in January 2020. A copy of the settlement agreement will be made available to the public once it is signed on behalf of both parties. Uh, that was the action that was taken in closed session. So. Uh, if there are any comments on that, um, I believe we can move on to our next item to reconvene the meeting and take roll call. Right. Uh, President Mayhood. No, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. I'm here. Vice President and Ackerman. I have to say that Jamie made it sound like maybe I got a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that's not what I did. I'm not that frivolous. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I will, I will leave it to you to share any details of your current situation, but she is absolutely not getting a facelift. She is, is, uh, is definitely taking care of herself in very important ways. Um, so please go ahead, Holly. <laughs> Vice President Ackerman. Here. Director Foles. Here. Director Hill. Here. Director Smalley. Here. All right. 
Um, are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda, uh, Rick? Uh, yes, Chair uh, Ackerman, uh, requesting to pull item 12B, the new staff position. Um, we did not include the salary schedule that needs to be approved by the board by resolution uh, per the personnel system rules and regulations. We, are, we will be bringing this item back to a July meeting for review and action. Okay, thanks for that. Um, any other uh, comments on additions or deletions? Not seeing any, um, we can move to oral communication. Um, this is the opportunity for members of the public if they have a comment that's not on the agenda that they would like to make to please uh, comment. And Amanda, I see your hand. And welcome, Amanda is a, an administrative committee member. It's nice to see you here tonight. Thank you. Um, I actually don't have something to comment on that's not on the agenda. So I don't know if this is the right time to comment on the agenda. Um, if you have a comment on a specific agenda item, if you wouldn't mind holding it until we get there, um, I mean, I I believe that's the typical protocol, but- uh, Not a problem, I can wait. Thank you. And I appreciate it. I'm, things are a little bumpy tonight. I, I've never uh, flown this plane before, so. <laughs> um, okay, uh, are, are there any other oral communications then um, related to anything not on the agenda? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, so uh, we can move to the president's report and uh, Gail, um, we had talked before. There is no report from the president. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so uh, no report from the president. We can move to unfinished business. Um, the remote meeting authorization. Uh, we're all very familiar with this. Um, does anybody want to just go ahead and move our extension of the remote meeting authorization? We'll make that motion. All right. Second. Mark is motioning and Gail is seconding the recommendation uh, as per the uh, agenda. So Vice President yeah. Ackman, I just wanted to provide a reminder to make sure uh, to get public comment, notwithstanding the lack of discussion. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate the reminder. Um, so thank you very much. Is there any public comment on this agenda item? Not seeing any. I think we can move to roll call vote. President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Excellent. Um, thank you. Uh, the Next uh, item on the agenda is um, the uh, filling of a couple of uh, vacancies on the Budget and Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. um, so we did have a couple of uh, applications and um, I believe the recommendation is to appoint both of those individuals to the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, do we want to start with, uh, let's see, Director um, Mayhood uh, for comment? Um, yeah, I think the recommendation was to discuss it, but I, I, do, uh, I, I do favor the idea of appointing uh, both of the applicants because I think they both bring something uh, to bear on the Budget and Finance Committee that we will welcome them. And, and with that, I'd also like to recommend that we increase the number of members on the Budget and Finance Committee to five. Okay, thank you. And Director Foltz, uh, do you have any comments? Uh, yes. Um, you know, I think it's great that we have two people that want to be in the uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, it's been our practice to try to appoint as many people from the uh, community as possible to serve on um, our committees. And so this is really a great thing to do. Um, I, I just wanna uh, ask Gina a question. 
Um, we do have a policy about uh, people serving on two committees at the same time. So I'm assuming Monica would need to resign from the uh, administration committee. And can that take place tomorrow uh, without any problem? Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I think we would just ask, I guess, in, for an email to document the resignation. Right. And then I think concurrent with that, then we would have a, um, uh, a an opening on the administration committee. So we would either need to change the membership number on that or leave it as is and recruit for that. So um, I'm not sure which way we would go, but um, probably just easiest to leave it open. And if that's the case, then we would need to recruit for that as well. If I could just respond to that briefly, um, I, I uh, would agree that um, I would be uh, interested in leaving it open, but I, I definitely would want to take that back to the administrative committee um, and have a conversation with the, the uh, rest of the committee members about their preference. Um, but that, that tends to be my um, preference as well, Bob. Fabulous. Um, Director Hill, do you have any comments on the uh, two applications before us? No, they both look eminently qualified and uh, I'm always happy to have well-qualified people serving. Excellent. And Director Smalley? I concur with what Jeff just said. Great. Um, okay, so um, I think at this point then, before we go to the public for comment, we could take a, a motion if it sounds like we are broadly in agreement about um, uh, increasing the number of positions on the committee and um, appointing these two individuals who applied. Um, Gina? Yeah, I just wanted to add, we could avoid the additional administrative step of an email resignation just by putting in the motion that, um, that uh, the individual, I think it's Ms. De Jesus, would be. Um, no, no uh, Monica Martinez. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, would no longer be on the administrative committee and would instead serve on the budget and finance committee. Thank you for the suggestion. So um, before we go to public comment, uh, Bob? Uh, I move that we have. Sorry, if there's some background noise, um, hopefully it's not me. Um, I move that we uh, appoint um, Elizabeth Paulson and Martina, Monica Martinez to the Budget and Finance Committee, uh, increasing the number of members on the Finance Committee to five and accept Monica Martinez's resignation from the Administration Committee. I'll second that. Thank you. So we've got a motion and a second, and we will uh, go to public comment. Um, do any members of the public uh, have any comments about um, the motion before the board or the two applicants? I'm not seeing any. I'm, re I'm really glad that it's not Amanda because I don't want to lose her. I... <laughs> um, so uh, great, thank you very much. So we've got a, a motion and a second. Um, so Holly, I think we can go to a roll call vote. President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackerman. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. <clears throat> motion passes. Excellent, well, welcome to the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, so, uh, our next, uh, item of business is ordering, uh, an election and requesting the, uh, county elections to conduct the election. Um, do we have, uh, any discussion about this recommendation? Okay, Bob, I'll start with you. Um, I did want to make sure that um, Elena Lang's questions got answered as uh, she had sent an email to the board asking some questions uh, about it. Um, I think uh, Gina is probably in the best position to answer those um, at an appropriate time. Um, otherwise, we, we do need to move to getting the election um, on the book. Uh, Bob, 
Bob, I, I did actually apply to uh, respond to Alina's uh, email um, oh. and answered her questions. And I, I just didn't, I, I can't CC it to the rest of you without um, creating the potential for Brown Act um, violations. But I, I did get back to her right away. Okay. And, and these were largely, uh, these are rules that are set at the county level that we don't control. And right. that the ballot um, does indicate whether somebody's an incumbent by virtue of appointment or election. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to make sure there is no confusion on her part. Of it. Thank you, Gail, for taking care of me. All right, Mark. So, from a procedural aspect, if four candidates are running, none of the four of them elect to place their name for that two-year seat, we elect three individuals and that two-year seat is then open. Is that the way this process could work? Gina, I, I think I see your head Good. nodding yes. Yes, that could occur. Um, okay. But, but it is three that, uh, right? That, that's open. There's actually four seats open, three four-year term and one two-year term. Correct. Correct. And I think that's what I stated with, you would elect three candidates out of those four that wanted the four-year seats, and the two-year seat would then be left vacant, and we would end up appointing. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Or, I mean, not necessarily appointing, but that would be an option that would arise once that would be an option that can. would present us. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, okay, I, I saw, I think let's go to Rick first because he may have a clarifying comment and then Bob. Just uh, real quick, usually that doesn't happen, usually it's watched very close uh, at closing of uh, uh, putting your papers in, and if there was an open seat, usually someone will. We'll put their name in for that open seat. That's usually watched very close up to the end. Okay. Bob. Yeah, specifically, Mark. What ha what happens is if the incumbent does not file for the op for the seat, then the nomination time is extended. I think it's another five days, and so in that five day period, usually somebody comes forward. And I, I did want to clarify something with, with Gina, though, just to make sure that I'm on the same page about uh, the question around um, incumbency. So if, for example, I were to file for the two-year seat, um, would would I be an incumbent at that point? Because that, that's not the seat that I currently hold. Conversely, if, if someone were to run, that held the two-year seat, I guess in this case, Jamie were to run for the four-year seat, would that be an incumbent uh, situation? Well, I, I don't like to, to deflect, but in this case, I really would have to refer you to the elections office because um, the code doesn't really get that specific, and um, I'm not sure exactly how they would make that designation. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Mark, I see your hand. Yes, I believe that the other matter that we have in front of us regarding this um, is the extent of the candidate statements. Am I correct? Uh, let's see here. Two, so 200 we, words versus 400 words is what I... I... It does appear that we had made a, well, perhaps it was a past selection. When I looked at the documents, it looked like we had already determined that we were selecting the 200 word or no, was I misunderstanding that? May I help with that? Yes, please. Um, yes, I merely stated what we have done in the past uh -huh. and it can be changed at any time. Uh, these are requirements by the state that we make this choice of either 200 or 400 words. Uh, in the past, the board wanted to make it paid for by the people that are um, planning to run for the position, and that is to save money. And then the reason that we went with the 200 words is because it is cheaper for everyone, and they it makes it so that they're, everybody's on an even space, so that somebody that can't afford 
to uh, run with 400 words can still, uh, we just keep it to 200 just to keep it kind of on an even playing field. And, and if I don't need, and if somebody doesn't need 200 words, can we, can we buy 25 words instead? <laughs> Name that tune in three words. Exactly. That's where I'm going. Gina, do we need to, because um, I'm, I'm looking at the recommendation, do we need to actually indicate specifically um, in the, the resolution what we would prefer in terms of the um, uh, statement of qualifications? Well, the, the resolution does provide for the district to submit the notice to the county clerk of elective offices to be filled and that is where the district has to select the 200 versus 400 so it is part of this decision um, okay and it does have to be made you know by by the district right one way or the other all right well um i mean i i you know my my personal bleeding liberal heart would say, you know, that $200 for the district to eat per, I mean, we're not going to have an overwhelming wave of candidates and it makes it an actual um, reduction in, in barrier because it means anyone, regardless of whether you have $200 could run for the office if the district just covered it. Now, perhaps I'm wrong. And historically we have dozens and dozens of people filing to run for water district, but you know, um, that that would be where I would come down in terms of the cost of filing, um, but I uh, I do appreciate that the two hundred dollar uh, and two hundred word filing is splitting the difference in terms of the cost. So, um, I I just want a clarification. I think um, if I remember correctly from twenty twenty, there's a, a charge to file, and then there's a charge. It's additional, right? Um, to so, which one are we talking about here? I I was under the impression that what we were talking about was that we were there was an opportunity for the district to either set the number of words that we were going to uh, require the uh, ballot language to be set at, and then determine whether we pay that cost or whether the individual filing pays that cost. So if we set it at 400 words, right, then and then determine that the individual filing pays that cost, then they would be paying the 400, you know, whatever the cost is for that. If we set it at 200 words, then they would be paying that cost. Or we can make the decision to take that on as the water district and pay that for all of the candidates who file. And I, I think if I'm understanding it, those are the two questions that we need to answer. Rick? Just one question at the appropriate time before you vote. And this is a question for Gina on if the district did elect to pay for the candidate statement, would that include current incumbent board of directors? Or is there an issue there? No, I would be fine to exempt ourselves, but yeah. And say that we, we had to pay for our own filing as incumbents, but that, that new applicants could, you know, be covered by the district. But I, I, so I hear what you're saying there, Rick. I just want to be sure that we don't get ourselves into any hot water right in the middle of the election. Although right, no, we don't want to make it appear that we're trying to pay for our own like election. Get, you know, to, be to be sure of that. Okay. So, yeah, there's really no way to make that distinction. It's either going to be for all the candidates or, or none. So how much does this cost? I mean, what's the difference between 200 and 400 words? Good question. I mean, are we talking tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars? Um, a friend of mine is currently Hundred. running for uh, Board of Equalization, and he had to pay a whole lot of money for, for this. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't yeah, like the, 200 bucks. Yeah, the, the, the cost is based on the number of vote. The cost for the um, statement is based on the number of voters in the district, yep. which, which I believe right now is roughly 18,500, 19,000, somewhere in there. 
So, and, and it's a per head um, cost. And I, I don't know what the cost is gonna be. It kind of depends a lot on how many people contribute to a statement because you don't have to. It's yeah. entirely voluntary. So the more people that do statements, the lower the cost overall. It's, you know, printing distribution. And so forth. Yeah. But it's it's hundreds. I mean, it's not thousands, right? It's not tens. Holly? And it's my understanding that um, this does not include the uh, filing cost. You still right. have to pay for filing. This is just a, an extra expense if you want to make a candidate statement. That's all we're, all that's talking about. There, it, you do have to pay for your own filing costs right. as, as a candidate. Bob? You know, I wish state law had some flexibility in there, um, but, you know, if, if there's no way to exempt us, um, then I, I mean, in the interest of, um, all the things around right. good governance, I, I just don't see how we can do that. And I think that's probably why it hasn't been done in the past. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think that's a fair comment. I, I certainly wouldn't want to, you know, I, I would want to be exempted from that. I just, you know, also believe that making um, people pay to run for office limits people who don't have the means to do that. And so, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I wish we could, take that out that factor out of it for all people who wanted to run but I fair point so um then I guess I would be in support of keep limiting it to 200 words mm -hmm. I agree so okay so um unless there is any um further comment uh I think we could take a uh, motion and, and a second before we go to the public uh, for comment on this item. Uh, do I have a, a motion to recommend um, that we uh, adopt a resolution ordering an election requesting Santa Cruz County elections to conduct the election and requesting consolidation of such election for San Lorenzo Valley Water District, as well as the notice to county clerk of elected officers to be filled. Uh, indicating that candidate statements of qualification shall be limited to 200 words. I so move. Thank you. Second. I'll second that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Reading, uh, yeah, no problem. Um, all right. And with that, we can go to the public if there are any comments on this item. Seeing no hands. Uh, Rick? Did that resolution or that motion cover whether the district is offering to pay or not? I didn't hear that. I might have. Yes. Yeah, we are We are not going to offer to. Okay. I just want to be sure of that. Okay, so I think we can take a roll call vote, Holly. President Mayhood. Aye. Pre Vice President Ackerman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. All right. Oh, moving right along. Um, okay. So the next item on the agenda is uh, well, we've pulled the construction inspector. So we are moving to um, public outreach. Excuse me, I'm just scrolling here. Um, okay, I I guess I would like to take a point of privilege here, if that's all right, to just sort of set up this discussion. Um, uh, as the administrative committee chair, um, we have been uh, talking about um, the district's public outreach resources for some time and um, looking at um, the amount and complexity of the, um, you know, projects and information that we know we are going to be um, wanting to uh, communicate to the public over the next uh, year at least. Um, we thought that uh, it might be prudent to take a, another look at the consulting resources that we currently have available to us. Um, so uh, we asked staff to take a look at um, what was uh, both available in terms of additional budget um, and uh, also what you know resources um, in particular we may need uh, 
uh, as we go forward over this next year, uh, that, that our current consulting contract with Buzz PR is not necessarily able to fulfill. Um, so I, I think I've um, framed the conversation. Um, Rick or Carly, do you wanna jump in? Sure, thank you, Director Ackman. Um, I'd like to just touch on what the Buzz has accomplished since we've hired them in uh, 2020. So they did complete a customer survey um, looking for information on how customers really want to receive their information and what types of information they were interested in. Um, they've also launched us on a couple different platforms for social media, including Twitter and Instagram. Um, they do keep us very active on all our social media accounts. We're pretty much posting at least once a day and at the very minimum, probably three times uh, per week. Um, they've also done a lot of our design for some of our special projects like the customer confidence report, the CCR, as well as the state of the district that we've done over the last few years. Um, as Jamie, or as Director Ackman mentioned, uh, their technical writing is not up to par with what we think we need for the district. And that's why we're looking to go out for a request for proposals from some new uh, potential consultants. Um, thank you. So um, I, I think at this point we can turn to uh, Director Foltz as my uh, fellow administrative committee member for comments. Would you like to say anything at this point or? Uh, yes, uh, just to make sure I'm clear on what we're uh, doing here. So this is um, going out. Um, so we're going to develop an RFP or has that RFP already been developed? I believe that if we um, if we were to to um, take this action tonight, we would be asking staff to develop an RFP. And then would that RFP come back to the board for approval, or is it would it just go out? Our, our, if you don't mind me jumping in, Jamie, our plan, uh, Director Foltz, was to develop uh, the RFP and bring it back to the admin committee. Oh. Um, probably wouldn't bring it back to the full board, not unless there was some. Uh, something that came up in admin, but we bring it back to admin, then go out, release it. And and the RFP will discuss the objectives that the uh, district slash board are trying to accomplish over uh, the engagement with whoever get, would be selected by the RFP. That's correct. Great, thank you. Um. Director uh, Smalley, I'll start with you. Do you have any comments? Um, yes, I, um, I guess I read the information incorrectly. I thought we were being asked to approve um, an additional 15,000 on the existing um, contract that we have with Buzz PR but I didn't remember reading about RFP ish, issuance or. Uh, so. To clarify, we do not have the contract with uh, Buzz um, expired and the board um, elected to discontinue on a month by month uh, uh, purchase with the Buzz. Yes. And so we uh, had the admin committee review. Um, and um, so we would be putting out an RFP to enter into a contract and we're asking to, uh, because this is a, a mid-year and a two-year budget, we're asking to increase uh, from 35,000 that we have in our current budget to 50 um, with the uh, technical writing and um, wordsmithing and so forth. We feel that for that level of communications that we would need an increase in budget. So if I could clarify, Mark, I, we're asking to um, for or what uh, what we would be being asked to approve is an increase in the district's overall available budget for public outreach activities, and then we would be further directing them to prepare an RFP um, because we do not have a, a, a contract right now. We're on a month to month basis with Buzz PR that would outline the activities that the district needs um, public outreach for. 
and we would put that RFP out. Buzz PR could bid on uh, or, or submit a proposal um, just as you know any other public outreach firm could. Um, mm -hmm. But I, that that's what I think we're asking the staff to do here. Bob? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mark, did you speak? Okay, so you're asking the board for two different things, I think. Um, one, do we increase the budget from 35,000 to 50,000? Two, um, are we uh, approving the district, uh, preparing this RFP, and then soliciting? Mm -hmm. Correct? I, okay. That's my impression, yes. I, I missed the part about the RFP um, from my review. Okay. Apologize for that. Okay. okay. Um, all right. I, I, I do have a question about that 15,000 and um, if, if we don't if we don't do that, what does the district not get? You know what are we what are we missing? Um, do we not get information about leaks that occur? Do we, uh, you know I, I'm struggling with that, but I don't use um, Twitter or other social media, so I'm kind of the, the ill-informed dinosaur in those aspects. So, Rick, could you help me here on what do you what do you see the gain to the district is? Well, for I, that? you know, those are good questions, Mark. I see a, a higher quality of what we're doing um, with. Uh, the uh, wordsmithing and polishing of communications. I see a more professional firm in, in reaching out to our targeted customers and helping staff um, make those determinations. You know, we do have uh, some items coming up of, of great interest to the public and we most likely will be doing some public workshops such as uh, the constructability of the mm -hmm. pipelines, possibly a, a rate evaluation um, coming up. So there, there are some areas that we, that the existing staff could use some assistance that, you know, we don't believe that, you know, Buzz is doing a great job on the day to day. I don't want to take anything away from them. Yes, we did have a, a minor issue here not too long ago, but I, I think we need them to, to bring it up a notch or two um, okay. in our, our professionalism. I don't know, Jamie. Um, I, I, yeah, I see Gail's had her hand up, so I, I'd like to go to uh, Chair Mayhood. Yeah, I, I would just like to say that I'm in favor of this, and, and it's largely because I believe that with the, uh, the large pipelines that we're putting in to replace after the CZU fire, there'll be a lot of interest on this. And a lot of the communications will have to be of a, a a more technical nature than what Buzz is used to doing. Um, similarly, if we're going to have consolidations with Brackenbury Forest Springs and especially with Big Basin Water, there's some pretty complex issues that have to be uh, communicated. I, I would think that some of this money would go to things like, um, you know, organizing outreach events um, as opposed to, uh, Mark, uh, like you, I'm somewhat of a dinosaur. I don't use social media. So I, I see the social media part staying about constant that Buzz would continue to do the, as Jamie calls it, the day-to-day -day stuff, and that this is an increment to deal with um, what's going to happen in the next year and a half or perhaps longer um, that would really help um, our staff and, and augment our staff in terms of communicating at a higher level or a more professional level than we have in the past. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, um, if I could, uh, I think I'd like to check in with Director Hill here. He hasn't had an opportunity to say anything and just give you an opportunity if you have any comments. Um, I think my comments align very closely with uh, President Mayhood. Um, this is an area I have quite a bit of experience in in my background. Uh, but not with public public relations, but with business public relations. And uh, I think it's 
when we have large projects coming up and uh, some of which may be controversial, it's very important that we get the message right and we do it correctly and we reach to the reach out to the people proactively before opposition bubbles to the surface and people start getting upset because they don't know what's going on. So I, I'm basically in favor of this. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to go to Bob because Gail, I think you may still have your hand up from your previous comment. So um, Bob, uh, go ahead, take it away. Well, I guess then I'm, I'm a little bit perhaps confused because um, I think I saw the RFP, but the money is not being something that was being committed to now. So maybe just, I wasn't reading it right. So apologies for that. But, you know, I've done a lot of marketing communications in my career as well. Um, and typically what you start out with is uh, sort of a notion of what the budget might be, but um, really you're putting together your objectives, what the goals are, what the deliverables might be, what have you as part of an RFP. And then based on that, you know, you're you then sort of get into negotiations on, on what the, with the company you want to select and what budget you can afford. Um, my concern is if you're going out into the RFP was saying we have basically $15,000 incremental here to spend on all of these things we're talking about. I, I'm not I'm not sure that's really going to, you know, float anybody's boat. Um, I, yes. I mean, I mean, I hate to say it, but I've spent 15K in a month um, and, and more on, on, you know, really critical communication uh, at companies I've worked at. Um, I think what might be beneficial would be to put out an RFP with what it is that the district believes is critical in terms of these projects that are coming up and seeing what kind of response you get back um, rather than setting a budget. In, in fact, I'm not even sure 50K um, would be enough if we're really talking about a very expansive and significantly um, a broader communication scope than what we currently have. Uh, so I'm I'm okay with going out for an RFP and, and that I'm not sure that it's really the right time to be talking about money until we understand what people are going to charge. Plus, with the inflation that we're seeing right now, who knows what those numbers are going to be coming back. Um, of course, it may be better once we, if we get into a recession, you know, they're going to be looking for business, but I think it's really premature to be talking budget now. It could be much higher than 15,000. Um, I think that that's a really fair comment. And, and in fact, um, you know, something that, you know, I know I myself had had wondered because, um, you know, not only do are these, you know, we have pretty complex projects and issues to com communicate around, but they are multi-year issues. These are not projects that will be wrapped up at the end of uh, 2023. So. I tend to agree with you, Bob, that um, 50,000 is probably um, not actually enough to do the things that we'll want to do long term. Um, I, I think that I think that uh, we identified this $15,000 already as being available in the mid-year um, review that we um, just took a look at, I, you know, uh, last meeting or so. So. Um, I, I think that that's just um, identifying the fact that this money can be made available in the public outreach budget. We don't have to set um, a, a you know fifty thousand dollar you know contract authority on um, a request for proposal. In my view, we can do exactly what you're saying, which is put out a request for proposal for on-call consulting services. You know, for the the uh, uh, needs that are identified here in the staff report. Um, and for the the you know project priorities that we have agreed upon as as a board um, and team uh, need to be addressed, um, it, you know in my experience the way that uh, that would then you know typically work if we had you know a certain amount of of um, you know uh, budget available to do that uh, to to use toward that on call contract then it would just be a matter of giving the district contract authority for those specific projects to spend down towards that budget um, i i think that 
fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, no matter what we do, we're, there's sort of a baseline in terms of communications activities that any public facing entity today just sort of has to do. Um, you have to be on Facebook, Twitter, um, and and you know you have to have a website. You have to um, have those those forward facing things because that's where the public expects you to be. And for us to continue. Um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, just running those operations, there's just sort of a minimum amount of money that it, that costs the consultant to do that work every day. And unless we're saying that we no longer want a consultant who's doing that work, anything additional that we're seeking in terms of communications, technical writing, assistance planning a workshop is going to be additional money and you know, hence the reason for um, the increased budget authority. So um, in my thinking, um, Director Hill? I would like to propose that we actually hold two votes here. One vote is to authorize staff to put together the RFP and go out and solicit uh, proposals, including proposed budgets that they might suggest. Um, and the second vote to address the $15,000 increase in budget and uh, discuss that as a uh, as you said, something that we may need for ongoing activities that we're already doing, really. Um, and uh, I think that would make it easier for all of us to vote if we split this into two, two motions. Okay. Um, Gina, do you see any uh, issue with that? Or what are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there's no issue with that. Um, any board member could make a motion within the scope of the agenda item. Mm -hmm and splitting it into two would be acceptable. Okay. Um, Director Smalley? Yes. Um, along the lines of what Jeff was suggesting with the, with in the RFP, uh, potentially suggesting a budget amount uh, of what the district might be expecting. Uh, when I've prepared RFPs uh, for clients where we were trying to keep it within certain budgetary ranges. Um, what, what I often did was, and the district anticipates um, that we would need your services of X hours a week or X hours a month, something like that to put bounds around uh, the amount of time expected from them. Um, in addition to uh, the, what we would, need for deliverables. Mm -hmm. And in that manner, a consultant can see, well, you want me to spend eight hours a month, I need 20 to do what you're saying. And it would cause some amount of, I would hope, some amount of discussion between an interested consultant and us to come to you know, some better frame of mind. And if you're getting two or three consultants to say that, then I think we need to scratch our heads on that. Because I'm seeking some way to, to, to keep um, proposal costs that we would be getting within a, some type of a, of a range that's realistic rather than getting one proposal at 25000 and another one at 72,000. So, because mm -hmm. that to me is then very hard to objectively compare that. Right. Rick? Yeah, just some, something to keep in, in mind uh, in the re regard to the budget. You know, staff's thinking as we put this RFP together and hopefully that we get qualified uh, consultants uh, to bid. And part of this is to have those consultants on contract. And then as we move into the specialized projects, such as say big basin consolidation and those, we talk and get a uh, proposal what those costs are to and charge those to the project. So a lot of this budget that we're talking about right now is the day-to-day, -day, you know, Facebook and, and, and what we put out and polishing and editing uh, where we have that we feel that we have efficiency uh, right now. 
And then when we get into, you know, like a five mile pipeline constructability in that, those will be specialized projects that we will get a cost to do the outreach and then charge that to those projects. So, and I, you know, I agree that that may sound, that price may sound low, but when you include um, the capital and uh, other projects that will support that those funds to pay for those projects, you know, I, I think that having this consultant firm, you know, on contract ready to rock and roll will save the district a lot of time and energy, you know, moving ahead. Right. Just a comment. All right, Bob. Um, yeah, thanks, Rick, for, for bringing that to our attention. Um, in terms of the anticipated grant money that would come to support the consolidation activities, um, do the grant funds typically allow for that kind of spending out of out of the grant money? They should, yes. I'm not sure we outlined outreach in the Bracken Bray um, consolidation, um, but you know we see very little. Um, on that consolidation. But the Big Basin and probably the constructability when we're holding workshops, Big Basin will be many workshops. Um, uh, th those consolidation grants will cover um, those costs and for engineering and outreach. And in terms of the, well, I sort of look at it in two different buckets. So there's a bucket of FEMA money for and then our money for the five mile pipeline or all the, pipe, the raw water pipeline project. And then there's grant funding that comes from a different bucket for the consolidation. Um, uh, now that could change assuming Forest Springs gets FEMA money. Um, I'm assuming that since money's fungible, we could always take the cost of outreach for the raw water pipeline constructability out of whatever we're contributing as a district. Uh, it's really the grant. Yeah, it's really the grant money that I'm concerned about. Here. Um, I, I did also want to say that, um, with respect to our our current um, consultants, I think they definitely have increased the outreach activities inside of uh, the social media. But I don't look at um, uh, plagiarism issues as being uh, minor. Uh, at least in my background, those are typically pretty major. Um, situations. So I, I'm I'm in favor of finding uh, of sending out an RFP, but given that we're currently at two thirds of our revenue number for the year, three quarters of our expenses, and one half of our operating margin relative to budget, I, I want to see what they come back with in terms of relative costs here prior to increasing the budget. At least that's my my view, but I think an RFP is certainly in order and I would support Jeff's suggestion, which I think is very good on a lot of these kinds of things to split the question to allow for uh, those kind of votes to happen. Okay, um, well, I think that uh, at this point we could go to public comment and then come back and entertain a motion. Um, so uh, I see Amanda's got her hand up. Um, CTV, if we could. Amanda, I th are you unmuted? Yes, I am here. Excellent, thank you. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you. So first, hi directors, it's good to see you all. Um, my name is Amanda De Jesus, and I live here in Ben Lomond. Um, as a admin committee member, a communications and community, whoa, that just covered my screen. <laughs> um, I am a communications and community engagement professional, and I work in local government. And obviously, I am an SLVWD rate payer. I view high quality communications and public outreach and engagement as a crucial element to the district and government in general. Um, I believe it is the job of the district as a government agency to provide accurate, timely, and relevant information to the public in an easily consumable manner. This job, of course, is not easy. I know this firsthand. Um, as a public agency, the district has a strong responsibility to providing consistent and excellent communications 
the modest increase that is being presented to you this evening to hire a consultant and increase the communications budget really will provide us with someone, some people with the know-how, technical skills and abilities needed that will ensure you can stand behind any and all communications coming from the district. Having a full service communications expert is much needed. In addition to communications, engagement with the community is at a pinnacle of transformation as we know. As we head towards this quote unquote new normal, having engagement professionals who think innovatively is key. Um, our community is unique and requires niche expertise when it comes to engagement. So spending a little bit more money to hire and so spending a little more money annually to hire a proficient expert will give the district credibility, build trust within the community and provide the information our community wants and needs to know about. And as a side note, <laughs> as a comment on Best PR, I never saw a community survey in 2020. I am a government nerd. I follow local governments as a hobby on social media, through electronic newsletters, et cetera. And I sought out the district and found information without it being presented to me. That's an issue. <laughs> so one thing that I wanted to bring up to you with this is that, in my opinion, a budget of this sort doesn't necessarily need to be solely used on a consultant. I think expanding communications into electronic newsletters, e-blasts, is, is a really good way to reach people these days because you're right, not everyone is on social media. Many people are using email. Um, so it could potentially, and maybe I'm wrong about this and my, my misunderstanding of how this budget would be used, but it could be used for communications platforms like different emails. Um, I urge you to approve this $15,000 increase to hire communications and community engagement professional and keep an open mind to potentially increasing it in the future um, just to give the district services it honestly desperately needs. Um, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate the comments. Uh, uh, Larry Ford uh, is up next. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to make a comment. I'm, I'm really impressed with the conversation um, about this issue. <laughs> you guys are are way ahead of me in, it, in being able to uh, understand what we need to do. Anyway, I just want to say that I, I think this is a really important additional service that you need to add um, to be able to function well. As a consultant, I would be, I'm, I'm not worried about something like uh, on-call services and, and uh, you know, having a, certain fees, you know, that I could charge um, with approval, you know, for specific tasks. So that would work out really well. Having uh, some kind of an estimate of what the minimum uh, minimum income would be um, for my services would help and be attractive. So I think you're, you're going in the right direction. And um, I, I also think that as has been said, that there are some uh, really important challenges that need to be addressed, you know, coming up, coming up in the near future. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. And uh, Cynthia Zenzel, um, we could get her unmuted. Great. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Good evening. I'd just like to uh, agree with, with what Larry and the previous speakers said. I uh, appreciate the process you're going through to set this up. I just have a question. When and how and to whom will the RFP, RFP be released? How will you be recruiting and deciding who will be invited to bid on this? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rick, did you want to respond to that? I'm unmuted. Yeah, it, this will be put out, you know, we will send out to the different communication consultants, you know, that are local and in the area, and we will also publicly uh, publish it on the website um, to, to get out and anybody uh, uh, will be uh, able to bid on this. Uh, I'm sure Carly has a list of, uh, of outreach folks that we've worked be with before, and we can reach out to other agencies to get a good comprehensive list. 
Um, obviously, the more people we get it out to, the, the better um, uh, pricing and see what's available. Um, great. I don't see, oh, uh, we've got April Zilber's hand is up. Hi, thank you. Sure. I just um, want to reiterate what other people have said. We do have these complicated projects and decisions uh, coming up in front of the community. And I go to meetings <laughs> by Zoom and I read agendas and stuff and I still find it hard to understand some of the details. So having a very professional firm help with that aspect of communication, I think <laughs> it's helpful for getting community buy-in. So I, I support the idea of putting out an RFP for a little more assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any other um, comments from uh, members of the public? I am not seeing any other hands. So thank you all um, for your comments. Um, I, I think at this point, or unless there's further discussion, we could probably go ahead and entertain um, a motion um, on this recommendation. Um, but before uh, we do, I just wanted to clarify one thing, which was, um, Rick, I, I, I know you had mentioned um, that we had identified that there was um, uh, $15,000 available in the mid-year for the review. I do appreciate the comments that Bob is making that $15,000 is probably um, not enough in terms of this, you know, single contract. But, uh, you know, if we were to go ahead and make the increase to the budget, um, you know, the, the money is available to do so. That's correct, Rick? That's correct, and but keep in mind the board has not approved. That was just informational, and we will. Um, and um, I will ask if we didn't lose uh, Kendra. Kendra's still there. Um, our plan to come back with that budget adjustment uh, would be after you get back from leave. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Right, thank that you. money is there. Yes, to answer your question. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification. Okay, so um, with that, do I have um, a, a motion? Um, I guess uh, I, I heard two approaches to this. One is that we make a motion um, to uh, recommend that staff uh, prepare an RFP for comprehensive outreach consultant and increase the budget for 35, from 35,000 to 50. Um, and I heard a second suggestion that we break the motion into two pieces. Um, so I guess the, the first question is, does somebody want to move the entire thing in one effort? No. Seeing not, all right, then let's go ahead and um, can I get a first motion on the uh, preparation of the RFP for Com Comprehensive Outreach Consultant? I move, that, I move that we, the board authorize district to prepare an RFP for public relations services and circulate it uh, within the local community and the uh, larger community in the Central California, Northern California area. Thank you, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, so um, Holly, roll call vote. President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Um, so now the, the second part of the question is uh, whether we want to take the action tonight to uh, direct staff to increase the overall public outreach budget from 35,000 to 50,000. I'm not seeing, uh, I'm seeing Mark shake his head no. I um, I guess I, uh, you know, personally don't think that I have a, any problem with taking this step tonight because I know there will be things coming up that we may um, want to uh, have a consultant working on in the, in the short term. So I just, uh, um, my preference would be to go ahead and take this action tonight. But uh, I uh, know that we can revisit this question once we have received proposals um, and we can at that point make a determination about where we want to set the budget. Um, so 
uh, I guess I would ask Gina um, what your recommendation would be about how we move forward. Do we just leave aside the question of the budget? It's not necessary to make that determination tonight. Uh, I don't. I think Luke. I think I saw you <laughs> agreeing with that concept. Is that right? Yeah, we, and we would bring the budget back at the same time we bought the contract to the board for approval, and then yeah. the board would approve the budget. Hopefully, at the same time uh, that they approve uh, the contract. So, and that's somewhat standard from time to time, and we've done it that done it both ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion about that from uh, members of the board? I'm not seeing any. I think then um, we can move on to the next agenda item because we have taken the only action we're going to take on this agenda item tonight. All right, so uh, let's see. We have tabled the construction inspector position. Uh, so where does that leave us? We are on to uh, the consent agenda. Gina. Um, I would like to ask Chair um, to pull the April 21st meeting minutes for, um, for a correction. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the correction I'd like to offer is that, um, and uh, you know, for, forgive me, Holly, if I'm kind of stepping on your toes in terms of how you've done minutes, but I noticed that the written communications item on the minutes says none, when in fact there was an item of written communications on the agenda. Um, and so I want, I'm, I'm not sure how you've done that before, but I wanted to suggest perhaps changing that to say no discussion as opposed to none. And Holly, does that sound consistent with your past practice? There was no discussion. I don't know what to say. Yes, that is consistent. Bob, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I think past practices that we've identified who the written communication was from, if there was in fact written communication. It was just a line item like letter from, you know, person so-and-so. Um, I, I believe there was something, was there not? So we, we would normally include that as a, as a line item. I mean, we can change practice and say no, there was something but no discussion or just no discussion, but it, that would be a deviation from our practice. I, so are, have I, we, uh, I just ahead. have a comment. I think, I think it would be useful just to do what we do on the agenda, which is list the name and date of the communication. And then if you want us no discussion, um, that's fine. Right. Yeah. But uh, I, that's just consistent with what we have on the agendas, the name and the date. So that should probably appear in the minutes. Right. Gina, did you have another comment? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'll put my hand down. That's okay. Um, okay, so we are pulling those minutes to make that correction and they will come back at a subsequent meeting. Um, are there any comments on the um, other uh, meeting minutes on the agenda for approval or can I get a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda meeting minutes for May 5th, 2022? Do we need a motion for consent? Yeah, oh, thank yeah you. if I could just clarify here, there's no need for a motion on the May 5th uh, minutes because nobody pulled them. Got it. So as long as there's no objection, they'll be deemed approved. But the April 21st uh, meeting minutes, because I effectively pulled it by my comments. So um, we so need to get a make the motion them. to amend them per your comments. Uh, right. To, okay, got it. Sorry about that. And and there should be, uh, sorry to complicate, there should be an opportunity for public comment on this as well. Right. 
Um, so why don't we, um, if I have a, a motion and a second, um, and then we will take public comment on this um, to make the recommended um, edit to the uh, minutes per Gina's uh, suggestion uh, to indicate the that there was no discussion and the individuals. Do I have a motion? Bob? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. So are we putting just no discussion or are we going to put the, the date as Gail was saying, the date, the person, and then no discussion? I'm not, wasn't clear, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I was saying the the uh, date, the person, and no discussion would was my me, um, recommended. Okay, let me state the motion. Go ahead, Gail. Uh, I move that we uh, modify the April 21st minutes to read under written communication, the name of the communicant, the date of their communication, and in this particular case, uh, the fact that there was no discussion, and that in the future we will uh, list the name and date of the communication. Thank you. I'll, I'll second that. Wonderful. How do we need a roll call vote? I think you need to go out to the public. Oh, thank you. We need to go out to the public. Like I said, a little turbulent, a little turbulent. We're just landing this plane tonight. Okay, do, do any members of the public have comments on this? Seeing none, um, all right, now I think we can take a vote. Holly, I think you're on mute. President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. <coughs> All right, um, thank you very much. And we're on to district reports. Um, do any of the directors have any uh, comments on district reports? Director Smalley? Yes, <clears throat> um, I'd like to uh, note that regarding the cross country pipelines aspect, the engineering department report uh, indicates that we're doing this peer review uh, for the geotechnical aspects. We talked about that at a previous meeting. I note that the environmental department report um, now indicates the same, that they are going out with an RFP to do a similar peer review on the environmental aspects, which is different than what we heard at the previous board meeting. So, that has been added to the scope, which is a positive thing. I support that. Yeah, and I was going to report that on the district manager's report that I misspoke uh, at the last okay. board meeting stating we were okay. not, but we are um, doing uh, peer review on environment. Okay. I have a couple of other questions on the engineering report, if you want me to continue, Amy. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I note on the uh, summary of um, construction items that the Felton Acres pressure tank, which we have seen before on these, is no longer uh, listed. Um, have that been resolved? Uh, because my recollection was that we were considering not having to do this tank if other tanks served or did it just get uh, missed from the department report. I suspect uh, we should say it got missed. I removed it because nothing has changed and nothing will see. until this summer when we are able to go out and determine exactly what those pressure tanks do so that we can then determine a path forward. I see. Okay. So you need summer weather to test. Understand. Correct. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, and then on Alta Via, uh, have we resolved the um, pipe shortage aspect or the or the pipe non-delivery aspects? We have not yet resolved it, and I'm going to be reluctant to say that it is resolved until pipe is in hand. Yes. At this point, based on communication with um, Anderson Pacific, 
We are currently looking at four to six months. The six months is more likely and prices are changing on a daily basis. So I am working with them in order to get something nailed down so that we can get pipe and get this job done without having to deal with a huge change order. Okay, thank you. Okay, those are my questions, thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, Director Fultz, I saw your hand up. Do you have some questions? I, I do. Um, I was wondering if I might be able to do a hybrid. That is, I have a few questions here um, for the public meeting. And then, Rick, if I send the rest of them to you by email, would you be able to get back to me on that? Right. We'll, do, we'll do our best to get back to you, Bob. Uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe, well, I'm trying not to take all the time here because I got a bunch. Um, I wanted to get a update on the Felton Heights tank. Have we made any movement on getting that um, resolved one way or the other? We have we have narrowed it down now to two locations, and our next step is to uh, contact uh, the property owner to get a final determination if he will uh, give us an easement or not. And uh, we have that location, and we have the original location. And before a decision is made, we will come back to the board. And so we have two new locations and the original, or just one? New? We have one. We have one location that the the new location where we've been looking at and working on for quite some time with the property owner. Um, we ran into a snag with the neighborhood. A couple of neighbors complained about it being in their backyard. Um, the property owner contacted us and asked if there was another location um, we could pick maybe further up uh, in elevation. Um, we're not ready to, to move the tank up to a higher elevation. So either um, we'll go back to this property owner and ask for him to consider get a final determination or go back to the original where the tank is sitting now. Before any decisions are made, um, we will um, bring this back to the board. Okay. And is there a time frame where this decision will be made um, by the uh, owner? Hopefully we can have something uh, by July. By July. Okay. Um, we are in contact with the Homeowners Association up at Felton Heights. As of the beginning of this week, I spoke to the president of the Homeowners Association. Um, so now it's just uh, the property owner is tough to communicate with. He doesn't live in this area, so um, hopefully uh, we can make contact with him um, and uh, see if his concerns are met um, and come back from there. Okay. We're close to making a recommendation to the board to move forward. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, it's, as you know, it's been a long time. Um, on the uh, and by the way, are we going through all the reports or one at a time? So which, which way are we doing that, Jamie? Sorry. Um, I guess I, since Mark sort of ran through all of his questions, it makes sense for you to run through all of your questions. I just have, a, I think, a couple more here. Um, I, I want to make sure that I'm reading this right on the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the operating revenue. It looks like if we exclude the surcharge, we're at about two-thirds of budget with one quarter of the budget year to go and we're at one half of our operating revenue with one quarter of the year to go am i reading that right this would be on page Are 62. You, page 62 thank you mm -hmm. um hold on one second six 62? 62. Oh, 62. Okay. But page 63 of the whole thing. Okay. Um, can you, I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question, Bob? So just make sure I'm reading this right. So if we exclude the surcharge, our operating revenue is at two thirds of budget. Our operating income is at one half of budget, but we only have one quarter of the year to go. So in that one quarter of the year, if we're going to hold on budget, we have to significantly increase operating. That is correct. 
Do we think that's going to happen? Um, we have seen an increase in usage, um, but it's hard to say. It's hard to predict what uh, the usage is going to do. Um, so but we did we did see a significant increase in March consumption, um, and so we just you know we'll just have to wait to see what it does these next few months. Okay, I mean this this you know the operating margin goes directly to our ability to do capital infrastructure and pay you know borrow money and that sort of thing. So. One of the things I'm a little concerned about here is making sure that we are still going to maintain a minimum of 1.25 debt uh, coverage going forward for the next few years. The last five-year projection we had showed it at barely 1.25 at the end of that five years. At this point, with this reduction, that may move in a little bit. Yeah, and the, the debt coverage is something that I was going to include in the next budget adjustment because um, okay. I know you had requested that and I didn't include it at the first go around. So we will be monitoring that. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the other thing, I think I'm reading this right on the uh, past due analysis. It looks like we had a slight decrease for the total of uh, 30 plus days past due. Correct. Um, do we... Are we expecting another slug of money from the state to help bring this down? Uh, so we have the uh, LIWAP program um, coming into play. Customers can apply for that starting in June. So obviously that won't hit until the next fiscal year. Um, and then we also will have the second go around of the uh, pass through balances uh, to be sent to the property tax roll. So that will also uh, decrease that as well. Okay. And that will happen, that'll occur in July. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I just wanna say on the, on page um, 72, where there's the operating analysis year to date, from July to March, the, the bottom line total numbers there are still including the fire recovery surcharge. I understand from, you know, a financial reporting point of view why that's there, but, you know, the fire recovery surcharge really is not regular operating revenue since it's dedicated. It's actually, excuse me, restricted to uh, other activities. So it, it tends to skew the numbers a little bit when you're calculating them. Um, by including that in there. So on page 73, um, the operating analysis year-to-date trend, I did add a line in there um, for operating income loss, ex excluding fire recovery surcharge. Um, so I did include it on that one. Um, are you wanting to see it on the ones with the graphs? I, maybe, um, maybe a note that says, um, you know, just below the table there that says for, you know, the description, rather than redo the table, just point people to the other page because it is important that people understand that that money is not, um, can't be used for operating expenses and, and the like. Okay. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, oh, on the and by the way, on this report that you're doing now on the fire recovery surcharge and the COP, I think this is an outstanding report, um, and also that you started it for the 15 million. I, I did have a question on the 2019 COP. They're still showing uh, expenses applied to the Lompico tanks, and I'm I'm not familiar with with what those are. I, I thought we were done with that project. Um, it could have just been invoices that hadn't been billed by contractors yet, but I can check into that. Yeah, because it extends into the um, uh, Q Q3, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like you're still getting numbers in Q3 of of uh, the 2022, 20, excuse me, 20, um, 21, 2022 uh, fiscal year. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it could have been retention amounts, um, so I can I can look into that and see and, what those are for. And then on the 2021 uh, report, 
Um, I didn't see a column for the initial estimate like you had up in the 2019. Do we have numbers for those or do, do we not? Uh, for like what we think the contract amount is going to be? Well, no. In, in, so in the um, 2019 COP, your first column with numbers is original project cost per loan agreement. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can add that. Yeah. I, yeah. I think these these two reports are just absolutely outstanding and give a really good picture of, of how we're spending that money and, and where the money is going. My only other suggestion on the 2019 is that we might want to add a line for the fish ladder. I didn't, yeah. I don't think I saw that in there. I, yeah, I, I did not include that on this one. Um, that was yeah, my mistake. Th these are just great. Uh, reports. Um, I mean, at a high level for board consumption, really, that's that's a great place to start, and then you go from there if you need additional detail. So, thank you for doing those. Um, I think that is it. The rest will come in email, Rick. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess I, I kind of jumped into the district reports a little backwards. So, um, Rick, I don't think you had a district manager's report tonight, but remind me, did you have anything there that you needed to share? No, I, you know, Director Smalley uh, brought it up. I wanted to make the clarification regarding environmental um, review, peer review on the constructability study. I misspoke the last board meeting, and that's been clarified by both Mark and myself. Thank you. Um, all right, and are there any other uh, director reports on the um, department status reports? Not seeing any. Um, uh, are there any comments on the committee reports? Okay. We uh, do not have any written communications, um, and our next meeting is scheduled for June 2nd, 2022. And, and until then, I believe we are adjourned. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night. Time is 7.54 p.m. Uh, for our adjournment.